Well, this has been our social time from 6.15 to 6.30. Then Jim will take over with the uh, help desk. And then at 7, I'll do the announcements. And uh, at 7.05 or so, uh, uh, Ann will introduce our speaker and we'll have our presentation. All right, Jim, it's uh, 6.30 and I will turn it over to you for our help desk. Okay, thank you, everybody. Welcome, and we have maybe, uh, let's see, 5, 10, 15, almost 20 people attending at this time. Just for fun, if you are from outside the state of Florida, could you wave your hand in front of your, your face? Let's see who's the farthest away. Henry, Henry, where are you, where are you located, Henry? You got to unmute yourself. You're still muted. <clears throat> Vancouver, British Columbia. <laughs> Vancouver, out, not only outside, of, is that out of Florida? I think it's a little <laughs> bit further outside the United States. Just and, across uh, the continent. Yes. It's it's Vancouver. a direct, direct opposite of where we are. Get away from us. <laughs> it's amazing. And uh, Mead Stewart, where are you from, Mead? Virginia, Virginia, Central Virginia, where Interstate 81 and 64 intersect. Okay. Thank you for attending. Okay. Nice We're getting here. more people come in all the time, so they're all welcome. JJ and, is Oh, I'm JJ. sorry. JJ, where are you from, JJ? Jack Benny's town, Waukegan, Illinois. Waukegan. Oh, man. Yeah. <laughs> Great. <laughs> okay. Let's get started. We're open. For questions, anybody have any questions that they'd like to stump the panel? Yes, I have a question. Jim McIntyre. Go ahead. <clears throat> I use Office, Microsoft Office 365. And recently I've been inundated with requests to update my Outlook, which is a, an application in that packet. And I've resisted because I've got so many other things that I'm working on. I didn't want to get involved. But anyway, they really sort of tricked me into trying it several times. And uh, I followed the directions to a point. They made me put in my password for Comcast, my password for Microsoft, and a lot of other stuff that just didn't make sense that they would be asking for all that stuff. But... The bottom line is I was never able to successfully update to the new version of Outlook. So I would like to ask, is it desirable to try to update that thing or just let it go? And why is all why is there all this confusion about it? And if I look it up on Google, you get nothing but more aggravation. I'm not a Microsoft Office user, so I can't help. <laughs> I, uh, what version you... of uh, Windows are you using? Uh, Windows 10. <clears throat> it's a phishing scam. No. The Outlook update is a phishing scam. You... No, there, there is an update, and it changes the look and feel of Outlook. Uh, I tried it for a while. I did not like it, and I went back to the... Uh, uh, the original eventually will all have to go do it if you're using Outlook, but it is a, a new uh, improved uh, version. <laughs> it has a different look and feel to it. Other than that, it doesn't work a whole bunch different. Uh, but uh, at this point, I wouldn't worry about updating, but somewhere along the way, you're probably going to have to. Yeah. My my Windows 10 computer uh, just got forcibly updated from Microsoft Mail to Microsoft Outlook. You know, not the, the one, not the Outlook 365, but the one uh, they Microsoft replaced Microsoft Mail with a program called Outlook. That's correct. That's that's not the Outlook that we're talking about. <laughs> so, James, or maybe it is. Do you use Outlook? Oh, yes, I use Outlook a lot. Okay. It does my calendar, my contacts, and my email. It's I like the program very much. 
I just don't like all this aggravation with the update. And is it normal for them to ask for me to put these passwords into all these different sources? Do you have a mailbox configured for Comcast so that it goes Yes. out and checks mail? Yes. 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 So that would be one reason why it would have needed to verify, re verify your, uh, um, that's the one reason I can think of is that it would have re verified Yeah, I, I think there's your some different security things in it that it's going out and checking and making sure that you have access to it and that they're protected and you're protected. Okay, James, does that help at all? I'm sorry, I can't Well, help with myself. I yeah, Jim, guess. I, I use Outlook. I've used it for years. I have, uh, I can go back and check emails from around 2001, 2000. Uh, I, I've got them all squirreled away. I got gigabytes of, of messages uh, stored and I don't like screwing around with it either. And uh, I did, it's mostly look and feel changes, but I'm sure there's some security updates as well in the new version. But uh, at this point, I wouldn't, I, I would, especially on Windows 10, um, I wouldn't worry about it. Okay, thank you. A uh, quick comment, I've been watching YouTube videos about scams and uh, how they work on the internet and they can copy web pages that look just like the real web pages. So uh, the bottom line from all of these is don't give anybody money and don't give any personal information unless you call back or you go directly uh, to the official website. If there's a, a mystery website, be careful. Uh, sometimes Well, they'll come and very close to the same name. They'll just change a, uh, a punctuation mark or a single letter to make you think it's the same domain name or address on the internet, and it is not. So be careful. that's why uh, in a lot of email programs, if you get an email that has a hyperlink in it, a lot of times, especially if you're using Gmail in your browser, um, you can hover your mouse over the link. And usually in the taskbar along the bottom of the screen, it shows you what the actual link is. Um, every link in an email message has the text that you read on the screen. And then it also has the hyperlink. And the text on the screen might say bankofamerica.com. And the link might take you to bankofkorea.com. And And how do you see that if you link, come... Drew? Hmm? How do you see the link? If you hover your mouse over the link Hover itself, your mouse. Okay. don't click on it, but just hover over it. Okay, sounds good. Uh, let's move on. Next question from anybody. Well, if I can just add to what uh, Drew was saying, what they do as well is they try to disguise what you're actually clicking on. Um, I had one that came up on my phone just uh, yesterday, and it was claiming to be from Canada Post. So it said CanadaPost.ca, and it looked like an authentic thing, but it didn't have the uh, slash. It had a dash. And then some other stuff after it, pop and M help and all this kind of nonsense. So the whole um, domain name is everything from the double slash to the single slash. So if there's no single slash at the end, it means that whole thing is one big domain name. And that pretty much gives you an indication that it's a scam right off the bat from that. Okay, thank you. Any other questions now? Open for questions. Yeah, Jim, I have one. Um, when uh, I tried to get, I'm getting ready to renew my Norton uh, antivirus for this coming year. But what I found was that uh, they had gone ahead and 
charge my uh, credit card for a full price of it, even though I didn't authorize it. I didn't even know they had the credit card number. But that, that's the issue I'm facing now, whether or not to uh, continue with Norton or to switch to something else. So I was, I was wondering uh, if anybody had uh, any kind of objective view on the difference between the Windows security system and what you might get by paying for Norton. Because right now I'm not inclined to, to go ahead and, and continue with them, given that they've pulled this shenanigan on me. Well, personally, I have I only use free stuff. And I use the Windows security that comes with Windows. And occasionally I'll do a scan of CCleaner and Glary Utilities. And they're all free. And I have never had a problem. Now, that does not mean to say I can't get a problem. And I don't really know what the value is added if you pay for some security package. Maybe they give you a better guarantee. Maybe they do a better job. I don't know. Anybody have any other comments? Yeah, I know with uh, malware bytes, the free version of it um, will check. It scans your drives and files, but it doesn't do any real-time monitoring unless you pay for the premium version, which then can check your uh, open ports and um, a lot of other things that most antiviruses don't usually do, like Avast and Norton and those don't check or block websites on open ports, but Malwarebytes does. That's why I have that one running uh, as well, and, awesome. the and, the, and the Microsoft one as well. Um, Malwarebytes does offer a free uh, browser guard that I like to use um, that does real-time uh, malware blocking on websites that you visit. And I've occasionally in Google, you know, go to you do a Google uh, search, and uh, I might click on a website and malware bytes, not not Windows, um, not my paid antivirus software, but the free malware bytes browser guard will pop up and not let me go to that website because it suspects something is wrong. And then it gives you the option to proceed at your own risk. Yeah, that's a, that's that's a shortcut I found is because some of the times it tends to have a lot of uh, false positives. Um, it used to in the past. I haven't had a I run it every day on all my machines and I never have a problem. Well, I've seen the uh, some of the ratings on these, all of these, uh, you know, packages, not just antivirus, but the, the whole security package. And Norton seems to come out usually number one or number two, which is why I, I've kept on buying it on an annual basis all these years. But the fact that they uh, just went ahead and, without me knowing it, uh, charged a card that I didn't even know they had. Uh, I guess I'm looking for an alternative there that would give me essentially the same protection that I was getting with the Norton. And if a um, combination well, of malware bytes and CCleaner and maybe something else would do that, then that's what I would entertain doing. Um, can you, are you eligible to get a refund on that money that they already charged you or are you committed to another year? No, I, I called the bank and had them put a hold on it. Because okay. it was not it was not authorized, and I just said, "Don't don't uh, pay that." So what what I do is I combine um, I combine a free antivirus scanner from a company called Avast. Yeah, um, I'm familiar Avast, with them. Uh, is a reputable company, and uh, their free antivirus scanner uh, protects you know, scans all the files that you download from the internet. It scans all the websites that you visit. Um, it's a very good, competent, free antivirus scanner. Um, I combine that with the Malwarebytes browser guard. And that's what I do. Yeah, too. My... Most of the articles that, that I must also have the, have the Microsoft 
Defender one running at the same time, too. I've actually found that it caught something that the other two missed. Well, you don't you don't have any problem with conflicts among these? No, you just have to tell it what it scans, what areas it's allowed to. So you set up the exceptions for one so that they don't they don't uh, conflict with each other because a lot of the stuff that malware bites is good at finding. The other ones don't look for at all. So if you let it run for those and turn off all the other stuff, then there's no conflict on it. Okay. I've read some articles about antivirus programs, and they're all the same, but they they vary because uh, they're all checking and they find new uh, viruses and malware before the other ones do, but they all share the information so they can all combat it. So, but one is usually first, and so when there's a new one, they're the they're the best one that week. Then the next week, one of the other ones is the best. So long as you're consistent and have one and you're very careful, you should be okay. So if you switch to a free one, like a vast free one, you should should be pretty good. But a lot of the articles I read, uh, say the Microsoft one is, is more than adequate as well. So uh, I happen to use one called Emisoft. I, I got a, a couple of free years for it. And it, it, every once in a while it comes up and protects me. So I know it's there. And so I pay the money every year because I know it works. I haven't, uh, uh, get, I haven't gotten bitten and it saved me a few times. Maybe you could clarify the, uh, for the rest of us, the difference between a virus protection program or app that is active all the time when you're using your computer versus or compared to a cleaner package that you run when you want to and it's not running in the background all the time. Can you only have one virus protection package active? Yeah, yes, in, in memory, in Windows, you can only have one default antivirus program and and if you have uh, Microsoft Bitdefender running and you install a third-party product, whatever it is, the normal install process should deactivate Microsoft Bitdefender's uh, antivirus engine. And I and think the opposite with, is true. Uh, you can turn it on and have them run both at the same time as well. That's what I did, plus malware bytes. I had that running in memory at the same time as well. You do. What can happen when you're running multiple antivirus is that one will think the other is a virus. And so uh, yeah. it's not a good idea to have multiple. It depends uh, on how you set it up. Yeah. I, mean, I, got, I haven't had that problem. Yeah. yeah, Steve, you're a little more advanced than probably most of us when it comes to stuff like that. So, uh, yeah, you can protect yourself from uh, issues, but uh, just to to turn them on, uh, you don't want to have more than one running. And I think if you have a third party virus protection package running and for some reason you decide to cancel it or remove it from your system, Windows automatically starts up the Windows Defender package for you so that you're not without protection, which I think is pretty good. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> okay, any other questions? Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, I recently uh, moved to a new PC uh, uh, that has Windows 11. I switched from uh, Windows 10 on my old PC, and I did the move with PC Mover, and everything went fine in the move, except that when I look at the new PC, when I uh, look at the uh, um, results like in Desktop and I do a search, I see that some a lot of my items in Desktop uh, show OneDrive. It has uh, it it shows you know like as as an example, one of my files shows C users, my username, 
OneDrive desktop. And I never asked for OneDrive and I never clicked on anything that said to open OneDrive and I have had, never had it in the past. And I'm wondering if anybody else had this problem or if it is a problem even. It doesn't seem to be. It comes by default. It comes by default? Yeah. Yeah, when you, when you do an, a fresh, clean install of Windows 11, even if you... You can turn you're it coming off. from Windows 10, normally it's going to require that you log into a Microsoft account and okay. um, yeah, there are options for that. But the normal process is to create an account and um, it will set up your primary folders, your documents folder and your pictures folder uh, to be Microsoft OneDrive folders. Okay. Mm -hmm. And there's there are ways of getting around it and turning it off. And there are ways to have certain uh, folders on your hard drive duplicated on OneDrive as backup and then other ones where you just have them on OneDrive and other ones you just have them on your PC and there's settings for that. You just have to uh, uh, read up and, and find how to do that. Okay, thank you. If you look on um, Ask Leo on the askleo.com site, he's got a lot of uh, YouTube videos on there that explain the pros and cons of OneDrive and how to use it and what it's good for and how to get rid of it altogether if you get it or just to turn it off and leave it. Yeah, his videos are very clearly done and very understandable. Yeah, Leo Notting, a, Nottingham is it something to YouTube? That's a good idea. Could you repeat the name of that uh, favorite? Uh, teacher that you just mentioned so everybody can hear it again, please. Yeah, Leo Notenboom. Okay, thank he, you. He's a, an ex-Microsoft um, employee that started uh, a, uh, his own um, Ask Leo uh, site in 2003. Uh, Hannah has her hand up. Hannah, we haven't seen you in a long time. I well, know, I know. Hey, listen, I'm looking for the best backup, uh, I guess, cloud at this point. I'm tired of using all the desktop stuff, which is the best, considered best now? Paid or unpaid, you know, free, paid, whatever. A moment of silence. We're all backing up, right? <laughs> I use something called iDrive. And it's it's fairly inexpensive. They're, they're running a special, I think you get the first year for like 90% off. Uh, and and uh, what happened originally when I first started with it, I had them send because I had so much data instead of trying to upload it all, they actually sent me a hard drive. I run their software, it loads on to the hard drive just as if I was sending it to the cloud. I send the drive back to them and then they load it for wow. you in the cloud. And then every night I have it go out, and then anything that's changed or added. It will put it out there. Okay, that was um, iCloud. I I drive. I drive. Yep, that one. It's yes, got that one's iDrive, called I. Is it iDrive dot com that I can get it? Or uh, send, would you send yeah, me? Yeah, the it is. It's, send me the address. It's please. exactly as it, it's exactly as it sounds. It's the letter I, and the word drive dot com. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much. Um, I use one called, in addition to Microsoft and Google, which you kind of sometimes, depend, if you're using their software, uh, kind of get wrangled into. Uh, um, I use a service called Peak. Um, I bought two terabytes of lifetime service on good, it was, they had a, a Black Friday sale. Uh -huh. And uh, rather than paying annually, I paid for a lifetime. I paid 200 and Fifty dollars, I think, for uh -huh. lifetime two terabytes of storage, um, and they they're installed on my uh, my Windows machines, my Chromebook, my cell phone. Um, it automatically backs up my photos on my phone to every computer I have to to the cloud, so I can get to it from every machine. Um, 
And it's I'm not sure thing. if they heard. It's not true. What is the name of that one? Uh, P cloud. The letter P is in uh, Peter. Yeah. And then the word cloud. Oh. And how much would it normally cost? Com, right? All right. Um, I don't know what their normal annual price is, but um, um, if you want to try a cloud drive for the very first time, just to check it out, uh, the 90% off deal that Huey mentioned on iDrive is a very good deal. Um, it's under $10 for a whole year, but then you're going to go back to regular pricing on your two. Very good. Thank you. Yes. Okay. I'm going to uh, wind it up for the uh, the help desk session. <clears throat>